in Andor, she's cold, ruthless, and undeniably British, but in reality, she's actually warm, kind, and undeniably Irish. Joining her as an actor whose character had plenty of parental issues because Star Wars, and they brought with them the suspiciously well-connected mechanic. Here from Andor are Denise Goff, Kyle Soller, and Audrey Arjona. to focus I know there's a lot going on wow this is amazing okay I've got sort of I've got sort of baby squirrel brain so I'm like all over the I place mean, when I'm out like here yeah fantastic. head on a swivel head on a swivel <laughs> okay. oh well welcome it's lovely to have you here thank you uh, it was wonderful to see uh, just a little bit of a preview of Andor season two this morning Did y'all see it it's very and good. I, we watched it for the first time while we were up there so that was pretty exciting so we yeah. watched it with you guys Wow. How'd it feel seeing it? It's amazing it, it to see it again. Amazing. It feels yeah. like forever. You saw it already? No, oh. no, 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 oh, to see to the see, show again. Oh, to see the show again. I was like... <laughs> um, to see the show again, it feels like so long since it's been out. And to actually see all the characters and all the new stuff they're doing and the, all the... And we don't really like, see each other a lot, you know? Yeah. Like, so you get to see all the people that you work with do yeah. their thing as well. So I'm so excited. I'm such a fan of my own show. It's great. <laughs> Well, I, I loved the first season of Andor so much, and, and your three characters in particular are so Yeah, but wonderful. who was your favorite? I mean, come um, on. It's, it's jokes. Oh jokes. my gosh, look over there. No, uh, <laughs> no, but I love all of your characters for different reasons, and I mean, the one thing that, I, that is common to all of them is they're very unique for Star Wars characters. They're not sides of Star Wars characters we normally get to see. Like the crushing mundanity of working for the Empire is something very kind of newish, right? In the, in the classic films, when most people think about Star Wars, they think about like, well, if you work in the Death Star, you probably know you're a bad guy, right? Like, that's the, that's the long time joke about Star Wars. But if you work in a cubicle or in an office, you maybe don't know that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's to see behind the scenes and like you said, find actually the drama in the mundane of it and also it's so because it's written so well you don't really know whose side to be on even though you're aware it's the empire like i i it always really struck me that people kind of loved dedra to begin with and then it was like sorry <laughs> she's super evil and, <laughs> you know but all the way through those early episodes they were like oh she's like a woman in a man's world and it's really hard for her and you go girl and then it was like hey bix yeah. so sorry but uh <laughs> right. a little torture you, yeah. you, you realize after like a few episodes of rooting for this person, it's like, oh, I don't want her to get promoted because that means she's right and she's going after everybody. And this is horrible. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things that I love about, about Bix is like, you know, cla classic Star Wars, when, like, when my family thinks about Star Wars and watches like the movies, they think about, well, okay, you, uh, the Empire catches you and then somebody with a lightsaber comes and you're good. And we don't often get to see like the long-term effects of what the Empire can do to somebody. Uh, and so it was very, it was rough to watch Bix go through it. I know, thanks girl. <laughs> I think it bonded Really appreciated them. that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she needed it. She helped you be your best self. Yeah. yeah, you had an awakening as a result of what happened. That is, yeah, yeah. That is right. very true. <laughs> yeah, I think. I Happy think to help. You become sort of like a survivalist. Um, living under the empire. And I think that's what Bix sort of is. She's, she had to survive. And I think in season two, that's kind of the exciting part. And I cannot wait. I wish I could say it all. Um, Go ahead, it's fine. All right, should I? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, <laughs> 
there's like yeah. so much time happens uh, by the time that we catch, catch up in season two and then there's so many little increments of time that passes throughout season two. So I'm just excited for everyone to see the development and the growth of every character. I think you'll get to see like three different versions of every character in, in season two. And for me, it's super exciting because, you know, we left Bix off season one in such a dark and yeah. torturous place. <laughs> um, that this time around, I think you'll get to see a very different version of her. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, for you, my card just says, what's it like to play a jerk? <laughs> yeah. Ouchie. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've been asking myself that same question for a year and a half. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, it's really hard. <laughs> it's like, no, it's been fun because he's his own worst enemy mm -hmm. and he's so conflicted and he is such a job's worth and he is such a wannabe superhero. Yeah. And feels that he, you know, he's these delusions of grandeur where he feels like everybody is failing before him. And in many cases they are. And he really just wants to do a good job and he wants to be the best son for his mother as well. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, it's just like, it's very touching, but it's very conflicted and he doesn't actually know what he wants. Yeah. He's really unformed, you know? He's not an adult yet, in my opinion. And seeing that side of the empire, of this just like absolute boring mundanity of like the emperor, empire finding its feet, becoming the bloated sort of large structure that we find in A New Hope, and Cyril sort of navigating his way through the like weird corporate structure of yeah. that is like, I mean, I, I started reading those scripts. I was like, what? This isn't Star Wars. This is like, and then he's having cereal with his mom. Dude, I was, like, I was just the cereal thing. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the cereal. The it's characters all about in the, the cereal. cereal. Like, I, if you had told me two years ago that one of the most stressful Star Wars scenes I'd ever see in my life is just a dude eating cereal. <laughs> with his mom, with his man. Mom. <laughs> He's just yeah. living at home and he's got to eat cereal. The, the struggle is real for cereal. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, it's hard, man. It's hard being a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> but, this is, but this is what I love is because like, you start out rooting for Dedra and then you're like, mm, not, maybe not Dedra. And you really, really hate cereal. And then you sort of find a little bit of like, oh, I feel for the guy a little bit, but it's nice that they keep reminding us every few episodes just, just how bad these people can be. They're all bad people. They're all bad people. Yeah, and even the heroes are so multifaceted and dark yeah. and a bit not awesome as well. So, I mean, that's the strength of Tony. Yeah, it's writing, Roy, right? He created writing. these characters who are not, not just good or evil. They're very conflicted and sit in the middle. They kind of all live in the gray. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 And I love, you know, one of, the, one of the things that I love about Bix is she's also, you know, she's also surrounded by people who are like, not the best, but doing their best in their own way. And um, her constantly having to make choices about like, am I gonna go to bat for this person again? Am I gonna like support this person again? Is it really worth it to, to like have this good heart? It's like, it's gotta be an intense thing to play. Yeah, I think it's really hard to play someone as good as Bix. I'm like, girl, just quit, man. <laughs> quit it, you're too good. Yeah. <laughs> you're too good. That dude, um, that dude is a bad boyfriend. <laughs> that dude is a bad friend. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think she's, she stands up for her, for her people. And I don't, it's specific to Bix, but I think it's also specific to Ferrix. I think mm -hmm. if you're from Ferrix or something culturally inside of you, that you protect one another, you, you look out for one another, you're constantly trying to figure things, you're constantly trying to survive. So when a friend asks for your help, you help the person, even, even though you, you know that it's gonna be to your own detriment. Yeah. And, and Bix was very aware that sending that message was gonna, you know, was gonna spiral things. Um, Cause that's kind of what Cassian does, right? He means so well and sort of things kind of always, there's always something behind the curtain. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's her, that's her friend, they grew up together. And I think Bix looks up to Marva. If she wants to be like anybody is, is like Marva. Yo, and we all want to be like Marva, Marva though. Yeah. Yeah, we all want to be like Marva, Marva though. 
hundred <laughs> percent. Even Marva, when she's dead, we aspire to be because she gets turned into a brick that yeah. then smashes someone in the face. Yeah. You know? yeah. That, yeah. That's focus. Oh, so good. <laughs> Never gives up. So Dedication. Good. Dedication. Yeah. Marva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that episode was so wonderful, and, it, and I think that's something that's so wonderful about the series as a whole, is there are multiple times during that episode where I was like, that's the best monologue that's ever been given in Star Wars. That's some of the best dialogue that's ever been spoken in Star Wars. And I feel like Andor is like that all the because time. Because it's Tony and Bo and Dan, they are, I mean. Big time. It's such a gift. And when you read them, like when you're in the privileged position of being allowed to read the scripts, like when I signed up, I read the first three episodes and I'm not even in them. So usually I'm like, I'm out if I'm not in the first three. <laughs> But I read the first three episodes and I thought, oh, this is magic. This is like old school storytelling where you're just going to focus on, on, on the setup. Like he mm -hmm. sets it up in those, in those first three and then he kind of takes it home in the last and in the center he just gives you all the meat. It's amazing to get to work on something like that. I mean, yeah. he's from, his dad won a Pulitzer Prize and everything. You know, this guy is from writing stock. So yeah, yeah it's a gift of a, of a job in every way. Yeah. yeah. I have to ask, you two particularly have maybe the most clocked runtime of any Star Wars sci-fi maybe of just cold, dead staring. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> cold, yeah. dead staring. Yeah. You, you two have some of the best just like... Yeah, but it was my favorite. I can't even tell you. I remember <laughs> asking for another take so that I could do this. <laughs> and just the eyebrows. <laughs> I have wanted to do that on any show my whole life. I was like, oh, please, can I do that thing where you look up and it's all really dramatic and then you just raise a tiny bit of your eyebrow. <laughs> and then it just became uh, like, what else can I make Twitch? <laughs> <laughs> and I just asked to not speak. It's just easier yeah. for me it's if cleaner. I don't yeah. have to read things and can just show up and stare. That'd yeah. be great. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to ask, so everybody doesn't really come together until later in the season. So when the two of you come together and it's just staring contest time. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. How, how, how was that? that for, we're, we're, but that was our first day. It was our first time ever working together. Uh -huh. And it was our first scene that we shot of the whole thing. And then we worked backwards. I mean, it was, I'm trying to find ways. Yeah, and I was really concerned. I was like, what, so Dedra gets saved? Like, I don't want that to happen. And then we thought, well, Dedra can get saved, but she doesn't have to be happy about it. So we figured out that she would go in the room and find the most dangerous looking object and like put it up against <laughs> his neck. But then it was just me and Kyle like this. <laughs> yeah, and I, standoff. It was I know. so brilliant. Yeah, it turned out amazing. I'm saying it, that as you all like, stared for a long I'm time. Not being but, arrogant. Like the emotion of the scene like really ran through like the whole spectrum. Did I pick up on like a moment? Was there a moment? Was there like a moment? There, like, Who knows? Was there a moment? Was there a moment? Was there a mo did you all, did you, was there like a moment? Is there a moment? Was it, yeah, you, you hope there's a did moment. You, <laughs> I mean, did you? <laughs> and if you pay me enough, I'll tell you. <laughs> Just meet me out there. <laughs> I'm easy to get information out Yeah, of. yeah, yeah. I told my seven-year-old nephew everything, so yeah. um, find him. He's out yeah. there somewhere. People in our um, families know the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. There's so much... There's so much that Cyril wants from Dedra. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're after the same object, which yeah. is Cassian. She, and she represents like, a lot to him. Oh, there's so much aspirational qualities. I mean, he wants to be in the ISB. I mean, that's the best thing that could ever happen to him. Mm -hmm. And her tailoring is impeccable. <laughs> And, and she's just she's like, how is it him? <laughs> oh, God. The trying to compute that I then have to be grateful. Like, Dedra yeah. has to... I, and what I love, though, is Tony didn't write her saying thank you. He said... She says, I suppose I should thank you. And yes. Says, yeah, you should. Yeah. And when he says, you don't have to, don't she's have like, to. oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> right, what do we do now? We have to leave this... Seven minutes in heaven, that's what we call that little <laughs> now. So what was it like, uh, you know, 
like you're saying, everybody was kind of off in their own corner. You know, you're, you're working with one or two characters throughout the entire season. What was it sort of like for you at the, at the end of the season when everybody was sort of coming together in the same place? Oh, it was, I mean, first you get to see, you know, other people's work and kind of get to know the characters. You know, I, I read the scripts multiple times and I, you know, I knew these characters, but then seeing them sort of created or, or having them come alive in front of me was pretty, was pretty great. I didn't actually interact, so I don't interact with your character at all, no. but we got to have that one scene and I remember it was towards the end. Somebody end, was end. clapping for that scene and you're allowed. You are always allowed to clap. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely allowed to clap. Definitely. Because this, this woman right here is so brilliant, and she just took over the room. It's true, it's true, it's true. I mean, you all watch the scene. You, I, you all know I'm not lying. Yeah, but you had to watch it like 150 times. And I was fascinated by it every single time. It was so well done. And, and just to see her and meet Dinta for the first time was really, was really cool. Um, and then to watch the show but it's also, I will tell you, it's not easy as an actor to sit when somebody else is doing all the like walking and talking and Adria had to sit for that whole day giving absolutely everything in every moment. And I thought, God, she's just really, some actors, when they're not on camera, they don't do anything, believe me. But you did everything all the time. It was such a gift. She's and I'm lying. a show off, so I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it really does seem like from, from top to bottom, everybody on this show just really loves each other's work and respects each other so much. I mean, it never, I've, I, I'm backstage with like the two guys that you had on before. Like, I'm in awe of everyone's work all the time. And to get to have them all as my peers, as people, my colleagues, I'm like, I can't believe I'm in a show that is this good, but also, and also it's Star Wars. Like it's introduced, I never knew any of this. <laughs> and now I'm obsessed. <laughs> so. We got another one. Yeah. We got another one. Seriously, I mean, it's just the world that gets, that is kept alive and created by this whole like, Fandom, is that what it's called? Like a, yeah. I'd say family, family, yeah, yeah fam for sure. It, yeah, like, it's a huge thing that yeah. you just think, oh my God, they keep, it's because of all of this that we're still, that we get to be here, you know? Yeah. But for me, I got to work with all of, also the best theater actors in London that I've worked with for years, like Kyle's work I've known for years on stage. And then I get to be there, and Fiona Shaw, who's been in my life for a long, like, like Genevieve. I mean, Genevieve. Genevieve. Yeah. Are you kidding me? What Genevieve is? So are? amazing. So amazing. Oh. Yeah. Mon Mothma's couch of sadness oh. in her apartment, where every time somebody sits sadness. on that couch, I'm just like, oh no. Oh I no, know. it's oh. coming. I need her apartment <laughs> yeah. in my life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, impeccable. Impact. Yeah. Well, we are so excited to have you all as part of the Star Wars galaxy. We love Andor so much. We're excited for this. What do we no, need to do? No, Denise, with this Denise. Stuff? You Why almost made it. No, Denise, you almost made it the whole Step interview. Away from Denise, thank you so much for hanging out. Please, applause for Denise Goff, Kyle Soller, and Adriana Arona.